In this video, I'm going to show a new feature we've added to QMage 1 version 2023. It's a feature which several of our customers have requested and something which we've been wanting to add ourselves. Whatever printer we have, we are limited by the size of the media that the printer can accept. So for example here, even though this Epson can print larger, we're going to assume that we have a printer which can only print as large as US letter size, paper. Even though we are limited by the size of the paper that the printer can handle, we may wish to print an image to a larger size to display on a wall, or we may want to split an image apart to place inside of smaller areas, such as to fit small window panels, or to make something more artistic. So with this in mind, this is the new feature we've added to QImage 1. Let's pick an image down here that we would like to print. And let's say we would want to make it bigger than just a regular page. If we scroll down to the bottom of the print sizes, we have a new option here called multi-panel print. And with our thumb selected, you see if we click on multi-panel print, it will open up a new user interface. In this new multi-panel print interface, we have three key areas. On the left here, we have a preview of our image. Right now, we're showing the entire image. In the top right here, we have panel settings. And in the bottom right, we have the actual panels. So far, you can see there are no panels listed. Now, you can be as flexible as you want with how you define panels, and we already have ideas of how to expand this user interface in the future. But for now, the easiest way to get started is to use one of the methods up here to, get to generate panels for you. So let's look at some of the controls. At the top, we have the image size in pixels, and underneath, we have an initial print size, which is the same as if you were printing a single page as large as it could be. Then underneath, we have a crop, and we can adjust the crop, which I'll show in a second. And then we have options for actually creating the panels. So the first thing you would do is you would decide how big of a print you wanted to make. In this case, let's say I want to make a 32 inch wide print. I notice that the aspect ratio is maintained to match the uh, pixel ratio. Now, if you wanted to change that, you just click on the crop button here, and then you are free to change these two values independently. And just like editing a regular print in QImage 1, you can click on Adjust Crop here, which opens a cropping editor, and you could slide your crop up and down or define a new crop. So now let's see how we generate panels. You'll see in the panel size that there are several options. We have portrait page, landscape page, custom, and columns and rows. And it's probably easiest if I show you what the first one does so you get the idea of how they work. So if I leave this on portrait page and click Generate, you will see two things have happened. We have a list of panels down here, given left, top, width, and height values. And over on the left, you see these green outlines indicating where the panels will be. So each one of these panels will now become a print on the live view. And when printed together, they would create the entire print that we are trying to make. So you'll see that these panels are as if you were printing a series of portrait pages. So if we switch this to landscape and regenerate the panels, you will see that now we get the panels going in the opposite direction. Notice that here, nine panels are generated, while if we pick portrait, we have only eight panels. So this is something to consider when you're deciding how to combine these individual pages to make the larger print. The third option in the list is custom, and you can basically define your own panels. So if I wanted all my panels to be seven by seven inches, you'll see that I get in the table here, each panel is seven inches wide and seven inches tall. And while we're looking at this example, you may need to do this because you're trying to fit these inside of a window frame which has gaps. So you notice down here, you can also define a gap parameter. So if I make this 0.5 inches and regenerate, now you actually get just the parts that you want and so that the image would look continuous if it were in some kind of frame. You can also set this to a negative value if you needed the panels to overlap. Now you'll notice that with the previous options, sometimes the panels are, are uneven, they're not all the same size, depending on the size of the page uh, you're using compared to the size of the, the overall print. So the final option is columns and rows, and you see here it's suggesting a, a default value for the columns and rows, and in this case, when I click Generate, I get uh, the columns and rows are now evenly spread. You'll see that everyone is the same width and height, let me make this positive again just so we can see how that works. So now you get exactly five columns and two rows with this spacing and each panel will be exactly the same size. 
So, so far, this, this all looks very uh, interesting, but we don't actually have any prints. So when you're ready, you just say OK, and now you'll find that you have uh, basically one print for every panel in the job. So if I go through the pages, you can see that I have all these panels, which will make up this entire print. And what's handy is there's a new icon on prints, where if you click on this new icon here under the crop icon, it will take you back to the same multi-panel print user interface. Cumwidge 1 knows that these panels, these prints, belong together. And if you go and edit one, if, for instance, if I delete this one and click back on the multi-panel print icon, notice that this one is no longer here. So it keeps track of the panels that belong to this, this same uh, print which you're trying to make. Now, we can select these panels and for instance, you see if I click on these, they highlight in blue, and they also highlight in the table here. And one useful thing this lets you do is if you need to see a particular panel on the live view, let's say I want this, the clouds up here, once this is selected, I can click on this icon here, and this will basically select the panel on the live view for me. Kind of handy if you do a print job and one of the panels doesn't print for some reason, you run out of ink or something, you can always go back and find that panel later. So as I said earlier, you have full control over the panels. If you decide that you know, you, you're going to do something uh, interesting and make something asymmetrical, you can delete panels within this interface. You can also add new panels. So if I click the Add button here, I'll get a new panel added, which is the current maximum page size. And you can click on any, any of these uh, fields in here to change it. So if this panel I wanted to shift to the left, and I want to shift it down, and then I wanted to set the size. This may not make sense, but let's say I wanted to make it four inches wide and five inches tall. I can do that. You have complete control. So if I then say OK, I will get those complete nine panels that I asked for. I can always go back in and look at them. You can also reset all the panels by clicking on this icon. And then you could regenerate them again if you wanted to. If I try and make a panel which is too large for the current page size, for instance, I might try and make this 12 inches wide and 12 inches tall, notice now that this one is has a red outline. This indicates that this panel is too large for the current page. It can't be printed. And if you click OK, you'll get a warning that one or more of the panels exceeds the current page size. So you would have to fix that. So I'll reset this to something which makes sense. So we can see the prints in the live view. And I just want to show you that if I save this print job and then I remove everything, I have no prints anymore. And then I go back and I load the print job. You'll see that not only do I have all my prints as I would expect, but I still have my uh, multi-panel print icon. And if I click on this, it will take me back to the same interface and all the settings, the print size, um, the way it was generated, all the panels are preserved, just like everything else you would expect in QMage 1. So as always, I hope you found this video useful. I hope you like the new feature and that it'll help you make some interesting and large prints to display on your wall. Thanks for watching.